Well, hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm in Suffolk for a bit of portable operation and we've got some sunshine, which is rather pleasant. Not that warm, that's why I've got my top on. But anyway, I'm going to talk to you about a portable antenna which I've been uh, using over the last few days and uh, you might be interested in it. But first of all, let me show you a bit about the location where I was operating from. There's certain advantages of having a static caravan. It's not classed on the holiday park as the second home, so you don't get penalised for having a second home. And you get a lot of the work done for you, like hedge cutting and <laughs> grass cutting and so forth, which you don't have to uh, uh, worry about. Um, now, the one thing I was concerned about um, was these power lines that run here. The reason I chose this site was because it's got a clear takeoff um, through 180 degree across uh, open fields. Um, there is these power lines here. On test, there's a bit of noise on 20 metres, nothing serious and nothing nearly as bad as uh, I feared. And uh, rather stupidly, I never did any previous tests before choosing this site. So it's quite windy today, so there may be quite a bit of wind noise. But you can see the power lines there. And uh, anyway, the good news is they don't uh, cause uh, any uh, significant problem. The antenna was erected as an inverted V and a very quick lash up, but as you'll see, it worked. Well, here's the fiberglass mast which is strapped to the rails of the decking. And at the moment it's only about 12 or 13 foot high. The reason being that uh, I just had a short length of wire and I had a short length of ladder line. Uh, the ladder line is only about eight foot long and the two elements are 12 foot each. So I've got a total length of uh, 25 feet for the antenna, eight foot of ladder line. And so uh, that goes into a um, MFJ four to one ballon and the cable goes into the window. And beyond the hedge here, there's just open fields. I'll show you a shot of the uh, view now above the hedge. Poor preparation meant I only had one end inch later, so one end of the antenna was wound round the rail. And here you see the operating position, Zego X6100 running 5 watts from an internal battery and a pretty standard paddle key. Well, frankly, the results were much better than I expected. Let me explain. I recently published a video, actually, on this 25-foot top antenna, and I called it the Agile antenna. Well, I've been doing some more tests on it, and I was quite amazed that I could actually get resonance on the 30-metre band and the 40 meter band, 7 megahertz and 10 megahertz. Now, bearing in mind we're talking about a doublet that's got a 25 foot top and it's got 8 foot um, 450 ohm ladder line at the moment and a short length of coax about two, 2 or 3 meters long, no more than about 8 or 9 foot. And I can get resonance using the internal ATU of the Zigu X6100 and with the MFJ ballon, which I think you've seen in the video, I can get uh, the ATU to uh, tune on 40, on 30, on 20, on 17, on 15, on 12, and on 10 metres, and it will also tune on 6 metres. Now, the 6 metre operation of course, it's very much dependent on the ballon you use because not all ballons are rated for six metres. But potentially you've got, what is it, eight bands from a 25 foot top. Now, the other interesting thing is the 25 foot top is less than a, a quarter wave on 40 metres, and yet it works. I put out a CQ um, shortly after I erected it, and uh, back came G4. PCE, just here, a bit of the contact here.
Now he was running, I think, about 50 watts. And he gave me 589. Now he was in Solihull, I'm down here in Suffolk, so I don't know, the distance is probably about 200 miles, something like that, give or take. But the point is, it was radiating. Now that antenna is less than a quarter wave long. It's about 40% the length of a half wave. So it does demonstrate that you can actually get a doublet to work on bands which perhaps you wouldn't think it would work on lower bands. Now I grant you that the efficiency will fall off a bit, um, that's indisputable, but the point is that it works. It probably works better than a short mobile whip and it's a very convenient antenna because you can switch bands very quickly. And as I said um, before, it's an agile antenna. So if you are in a difficult location where you can't put up a, um, a large aerial, and bear in mind that this, this antenna is only about 12 or 13 foot above ground. Okay, what meters? It's about um, four meters above the ground which is very low, particularly on 40 metres, but it works. So if you have a difficult QTH and you think that you can't fit an antenna in, then it's worth trying the doublet out because it does do some amazing things. Now, the important measurement from the, from the point of view of a doublet, I don't want, I, I'm competing with a robin here every night. <laughs> this robin comes out, it sits on the TV aerial but it's singing quite loudly, so apologies, but anyway, you probably enjoy it. Um, the critical mention, uh, dimension for a doublet is one side of the antenna plus the feeder length, and that gives you some idea of the um, impedance you're going to get out at the bottom. But it is very, very tolerant. Now, you do need, of course, a very um, capable antenna tuner, and I don't think that an antenna tuner in a lot of the HF rigs um, the higher power rigs will cope with it, but certainly the Zigu ATU in uh, the 6100X6100 is more than capable of matching some fairly dramatic impedances. Now, the loss on the carrots cable is minimal. If you've got two or three meters of carrots cable as I've got, it doesn't matter what the VSWR is, the loss is, is of no consequence at all. And uh, another transceiver that is capable, of course, is the Ellicroft KX3 and the KX2. They've got quite capable ATUs. And uh, my experience is most of the Zigu um, ATUs in their various transceivers will uh, cover a wide range of impedances. There's a bit of encouragement there. Well, I've had a lot of fun with that antenna. It's small, but uh, it's quite surprised me how well it works. And uh, I'm going to see what developments I can make on it to improve the performance and um, mess about with the size and the height and so forth. And I'll include that in a coming video. In the meantime, thanks for watching this video. And uh, enjoy, enjoy a bit of sunshine now. Bye for now.